Hello friends, in this lesson I will explain you the structure and the working principle of the diode, the most basic circuit elements of the electronics in detail. Before the structure of the diode, let's look at the electron configuration of the atoms. Atoms with 1, 2 or 3 electrons in their last orbital are conductive and those with 4 electrons are semiconductor. Semiconductors are insulators under normal circumstances but they can be made conductive by adding additives. Here, diodes are formed by doping of these semiconductors. The most commonly used semiconductors are silicium and germanium, whose crystal structure is similar to each other. While silicium is very abundant in nature, germanium is very rare. Semiconductor circuit elements are also made of silicium as it is abundant in nature. In periodic table, they are located in group 4A. The atomic number of silicium is 14 and the germanium is 32. In other words, while silicium has 14 electrons in total, germanium has 32 electrons. When we look at the atomic structure of silicium, it has 2 electrons in its first orbital, 8 in its second orbital and 4 in its last orbital. When we look at the atomic structure of germanium, as it is here, it has two electrons in its first orbital, eight in its second orbital, 18 in its third orbital, and four in its last orbital. We have shown them in two dimensions, but they are composed of atoms that are normally joined by covalent bonds. The bond structure of silicium is as seen here. Each atom in the last orbital is situated in a covalent bond with another silicium atom. Germanium has the same bond structure. After all, it will be like this since both of them have four electrons in their last orbital. Here, when this structure is doped with other atoms, a new material is formed. These newly formed materials are called N-type and P-type materials. Now, let's look at what these n-type and p-type materials are. Here is the antimony element structure indicated by the abbreviation SP, which has 5 electrons in its last orbital. This is an insulator since it has 5 electrons in its last orbital. When we dope antimony atom with silicium, 4 electrons in the last orbital of antimony bond with 4 silicium atoms and ultimately one electron in antimony's last orbital remains idle. The new structure formed by the doping of antimony and silicium in this way is called n-type material. Here there is the boron element structure indicated by the abbreviation B which has three electrons in its last orbital. This is a conductor because it has three electrons in its last orbital. This time, when we dope the boron atom with silicium, three electrons in the last orbital of boron bound with three silicium atoms, and ultimately one silicium will remain idle to complete the bound and the hole will form here. Here, the new structure formed by the doping of this boron and silicium is called p-type material. It doesn't matter whether it is silicium or germanium. Since both have four electrons in their last orbital, they will be the same. For better understanding, we can show the p-type material with hollow circles and the n-type material as more electron with circle minus inside. If we combine p-type and n-type materials, diode, which is the most basic circuit elements of electronics and which will provide many improvements, is formed. The p-type part of the diode is called anode and the n-type part is called cathode. There is a white stripe on the cathode. The circuit symbol is like this. It is indicated with a stripe in the cathode part and in the form of triangle. Alright, let's see how the diode works. You see the internal structure of the diode on the left and the figure on the right. Let's connect a voltage source to the diode S in here. When connected, the electrons in n-type part of the diode flows into the space in the p-type part. Thus, electrons are relocated from the negative pole of the source to the positive pole. If you remember, 
While the electrons flow from the negative pole of the source to the positive pole, the current direction is always considered opposite. So, in this circuit, a current flow is provided from positive to negative direction. When the diode is connected in this way, it will allow current to flow through the circuit. So, what happens if we reverse the diode? When we remove the diodes from the circuit and connect them in reverse again, the electrons in the n-type part of the diode will try to be attracted by the positive pole of the source. Therefore, there will be no electron transition to the spaces in the p-type part of the diode. Accordingly, there will be no current flowing through the circuit since there is no electron transition. That is, the diode allowed current to flow from one direction in the circuit. As seen here, when the diode is connected flat, the lamp will light as the current will flow through the circuit. But if we connect the diode in reverse, no current will flow through the circuit and the lamp will not light. Or if we connect a motor instead of a lamp, when the diode is connected flat, the motor will start because the current will flow through the circuit. But if we connected the diode in reverse, no current will flow through the circuit and the motor will not start. If a normal diode is made of silicium, it allows current to flow after approximately 0.7 volt voltage value. In other words, even if it is connected flat below this voltage value, it doesn't allow current to flow. However, if it is made of germanium, it allows current to flow after approximately 0.3 volt voltage value. Of course, this is not the case for all diodes, but it is considered theoretically in this way when doing circuit analysis. We can show this on the diode's current voltage graph as follows. The current voltage graph of the normal silicium diode is shown as in here. It allows current to flow after approximately 0.7 volt voltage and is polarized forward. We can show the current voltage graph of the germanium diode in this way. It will be polarized forward, allowing current to flow after approximately 0.3 volt voltage value. Well, when a diode is connected in reverse, how many volts of voltage can it endure without allowing current to flow, that is without damage? Or how many amperes can it resist? How can we understand it then? Well, we need to check the data sheet provided by the manufacturers. For example, when we check the data sheet of the diodes between 1N401 and 1N407, which are widely used in many devices, we can find information about their physical properties. Also, information about electrical characteristics can be found here. For example, while the 1N401 diode can resist a maximum voltage of 50 volt without damage when connected in reverse, the 1N407 diode can resist up to 1000 voltage without damage when connected in reverse. The maximum current value that all of them can resist is 1 ampere. In this circuit with higher current, we need to choose another diode. So, let's suppose that there is a current of 2 amperes in our circuit. When we connect the 1N401 diode to this circuit, it will be damaged. Because the current that it can resist is a maximum of 1 ampere. But let's say we don't have a diode that can resist 2 amperes current. What should we do in this situation then? In this case, if we connect two 1N401 diodes in parallel, the main current, which is 2 amperes, will be divided into two and will flow 1 ampere over each diode. So we can use the diodes without damage. Well, where is the diode used? Now let's take a look. One of the places where diode is used is the bridge type full wave rectifier circuit. In other words, it is the circuit used in power source or adapters. In this circuit, four diodes are used. Thanks to this circuit, the negative alternatives of alternating current are converted to positive. 
This is the first step in converting AC to DC. An example of where diodes are used is BJT transistors. It consists of combining N and P type materials as well as diodes. While the diode is formed in the form of PN, the BJT transistor consists of a combination of PNP or NPN. Trister and Triac are also formed in similar way. They consist of 4 and and P type materials combined in the form of NPNP. Hereby I have tried to explain the basic structure and certain usage areas of the diode. I hope it was useful for you and you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in our next lesson. Goodbye.